And welcome everyone to the Off the Block post-match news conference following a huge win in the Conference Carolinas Finals as Belmont Abbey knocks off Mount Olive. We are now joined by the tournament's most valuable player, Brennan Davis. Brennan, just take us through the emotion right, right now and what you're feeling being a conference champion for the first time in program history. Uh, it's surreal. Um, right from day one, as a freshman, I talked to coach and uh, our goal right from the beginning was bringing a championship home. And, uh, you know, our team was confident coming in today. And uh, I really can't explain the emotions, man. It, it was just really high and uh, uh, I'm just enjoying it right now. So we're joined by a couple other media members. Um, if you have a question, feel free to um, raise your hand or, or put it in the chat and we'll come to you. But I want to ask you about the offense. You guys were hitting 400 for a majority of the match. What were you doing running it to make it so successful? Um, we knew uh, our middles, they, they like to get going early. So we tried getting them going early and opening up the pins. And, uh, you know, Andrew, Mateo, and Brandon, they stepped up big time on the pins. And uh, we were putting the ball down. We were very efficient, we were aware, and uh, extremely proud of them. Well, talk about your, talking about your pin hitters, can you just talk about the job that they were able to do today, especially Mateo, the uh, the transfer who came on over, was on your team until the fall. Yeah, uh, I mean, he flies, man. He flies. Um, he said right from day one that he wanted to bring a ring and a, a trophy home. And, uh, you know, our mission was to do that. And coming in today, we knew that uh, those three were going to be big. Like, they had to be big because, you know, Kudos to Mount Olive. I mean, they're a phenomenal blocking team. I mean, Torwee, uh, Harry D, the Scottish brothers, Yanu, uh, they're crazy good and uh, really athletic. So we had to – we knew that not trying to out-physical them was not going to be the way, but we had to play our game, and uh, we knew we would be successful. So I want to ask you really quick, going into that fourth game, tough loss in the third game. You were up. You were up late. Mount Olive came back. Did, what did coach say to you after that, or what did you say say to the team just to rebound from that tough loss in the third game? Um, we have this uh, charge up mentality. So uh, right after we were resetting, we we're going back to uh, what we know best, and uh, we knew that at that time we were controlling the game, and um, we knew that we could take it from them if we jumped out early in the fourth set. All right, we'll now go to Jonathan Bates of Off the Block, who has a question. Uh, Brandon, congratulations on the tournament championship. I uh, actually have two questions for you. First question, uh, you've been with the team, what, now four seasons. So how does it uh, just reflect on where the uh, team has was when you came in as a freshman to where it is now? Oh, man, we uh, I think we started off with 10 freshmen. My freshman year, we had uh, four sophomores and two seniors. So we were really young and uh, just kind of building up with those same guys. And uh, last year, uh, with our four seniors missing out, uh, we really wanted to win for them, too. And uh, they're still talking. I know I talked to Gavin Schaefer, who was there my freshman year, and uh, Liam Maxwell last year. And um, it's really good to have them around. And we knew, like, there's just such a good culture. And uh, we knew that uh, – Brotherhood just lasts forever. And then um, going into the or uh, at following up on this question uh, in this uh, match, I think um, probably the one stat that is a little surprising to me, uh, given how good the those guys brothers are, is that you guys outblocked them ten to four. You had two blocks of your own. What do you think was the difference in um, that in um, outblocking them? Um, there was our coach Derek and coach Nolan. They, they had a phenomenal scout yesterday and, uh, we did it last week as well. We were preparing for them and, um, we just knew where they like to go in each location. And, uh, the plan was to maybe do like a little bit of a block shift or just like when Toby was in the front row to release when the setter touched the ball. Cause you know, they like to go to him. And for me, like I'm only six foot. So I know that I got to make sure I get my full jump on him. So, um, yeah, we were just, it was a really good scout by our coaches. Final question for, for me and then if any other media members have questions, but obviously huge win today, but 
know the job's not done. You got a match coming up in another two weeks. Uh, can you just give us your thoughts about playing the NCAA tournament where you're going to be going up against, you know, teams that are ranked, you know, number three, number four, number five in the country? Oh, man. Uh, to be honest, I really didn't think about that. I was just more focused on uh, this game today. But um, I know our whole team's excited for this opportunity. You know, we, we're going in. We really don't have anything to lose. Uh, no one from the Conference of Carolinas has ever won a first round, but there's always a first for something. And this is the first time we ever won a championship, and we want to be the first to uh, take a win and uh, try to bring back some dubs for uh, Belmont Abbey in the conference. And we're now joined by the head coach of Belmont Abbey, Nolan Albrecht, after a huge win, first time in program history, coach your conference champions. You've been in this program since you were 18 years old as a player. What's the feeling being able to lift that championship trophy and raise the banner today? Uh, it was nice. It was very nice. I handed it right off to my assistant and said, you got to try this. This is the best I've ever felt. Like, um, it was awesome. And it was really great to, to see the guys put all their hard work into the performance. And I do feel like we played one of our best matches all year uh, and they progressively got better as the season went on. So um, I, I'm just really proud of my coaching staff. I mean, I can't speak highly enough of Darius Holden and what he's, he's added to this program. Um, and I also can't speak highly enough of our captains and all of our senior leaders and all of the guys that have gone before. Um, so this win is not just for us. This win is for everybody that's been involved in the Belmont Abbey men's volleyball program. Well, Coach, take us through especially the second and third game. You guys were up many times, up, up a couple times. Mount Olive came back. They won the third game. What does that say about your team that you guys were able to bounce back, whether in-game, Mount Olive coming back, or, you know, after losing a game? Yeah, I, I mean, I'm not quite sure what it says in totality other than we're a good volleyball team because uh, in this sport, some, some sets are going to go the other way. It's the reason we play best out of five. It's not sudden death. So um, I have to remind the guys that every so often um, we, like to, we like to get all the way up kind of past the ceiling of, uh, of where our, our hype should be or of where our effort should be. And I like to tell them, like, test where the ceiling is and then come back to the gym floor. Like, test where the ceiling is, go up there, feel it. Feel what it's like to be all the way up, all the way amped. And then come back down to the floor because that's where the game's played. So um, I think we kind of went down into the ground level or the basement level um, at some points when they were scoring some, some points. And they hit like 630-something in the third set. So it's going to be really hard to win when they hit that well. Um, and so I just reminded them, them of that. And then when the game... I think we were up 10 to seven or 10 to eight and there was a timeout. And I said, what if I told you that you had 15 more points to score to send you to Ohio to play in the NCAA championship? How would you play? And I was like, I think you've been playing like that the whole game. So whatever you said to me, whatever you thought, you've already been playing like that. So let's keep it up. It's working. Let's go. And I think they kind of ran with that. And uh, they're, they're, they're such a great group of young men. So I'm really proud of them. And they earned it. All right, we're now going to go to Jonathan Bates of Off the Block, who has a uh, couple of questions for you, Coach. Uh, I'll start with a serious question. Uh, you, you, Your team lost uh, the first two matches of the season series versus Mount Olive this year, and then obviously won today. What was the biggest difference between those two matches that you lost in today? Uh, so in the first game, we were down three guys uh, due to COVID, um, and I think that played a big factor. Um, Part of our strength is that we have a big, uh, a big emphasis on the brotherhood and a big emphasis on you know all everybody rowing together. And I think against a team like Mount All, we, we lost by two points in the first two sets of that match, and then we lost kind of big in the third. So we were still hanging with them. And then when we went to play them on the road, uh, we had just gotten three guys back from another uh, COVID issue. So I'm not going to be the the COVID blamer guy. Um, but I think there, there's something to be said when not everybody's in, in every practice and not everybody's healthy. Um, and I think also we just, our serving was really strong today. And that's something that we didn't have in the first two times we played them. Um, good, strong, consistent serving uh, was really, really big for us. Okay, I lied. Uh, I'll ask a follow-up question and then my not-so-serious question. The follow-up question, uh, obviously you mentioned COVID. What have you uh, learned about your team? What uh, lesson has the team learned uh, because of COVID uh, or playing through the pandemic? Has the team learned? You ask good questions. Um, 
you know, I'll be interested to ask them once we're all once we're all through. I think sometimes they learn which rules um, are easy to skirt around, um, and I think they've also learned the, I guess, the ramifications of their actions. Um, so if they end up going to a bunch of parties and get contact traced out, then they don't play, and our team doesn't play well. And I think they've learned that, you know, as a student athlete, and John Wooden said this that you can uh, destroy your team way more in the 22 hours outside of practice than you can ever build it up in the two hours in practice. And so we, we kind of talked a lot about that and, and talked about how the decisions and things you do outside of this gym are more valuable, honestly, than what we do in the gym. And uh, I, I hope that that sticks with them and they see that in other areas in their life as well. Um, and I think that's, that's one thing that I hope they learn from this. And then of course my, uh, not so uh, serious question. The, uh, I guess the one drawback of the championships being both, uh, both the women's and the men's championship uh, being at King today is that you did not get to cut down the net, correct? Are you going, are you going back out there to claim what is yours? Um, nope. <laughs> I don't think so. I, we're, we're bringing up, uh, we're bringing back enough stuff. I think we'll leave the net intact. The net didn't do anything to us. We don't need to end its life. Um, we'll let it. We'll let it live another day. I mean, we have to come back here and miss more serves next year. So, um, you know, something's got to stop that serve from getting over. Coach, two final questions for me before we wrap up. Do you want to ask you about your middle attacker Riley Malkin today? Zero attack errors, couple aces. Can you just talk about his presence on the court, both at the net and behind the service line? Dude, Mulkey is, is – he's another level. He's another level of volleyball player. That kid will play volleyball eight days a week. Um, I have to literally tell him, I think maybe playing beach during seasons may not be the best decision as a middle blocker. Um, there would be an argument to be made for libero. You can get outside and whatever. But, I, I'm like, it doesn't really help. Um, he's just an animal. And I love his intense, like intensity. He's very, very intense when he's in there playing. And then when he comes out of the court – He's just the biggest, you know, uh, fan of the game. He's the biggest fan of his teammates. Um, and uh, I'm just, I'm very proud of him. He's, he's done a lot of work in the weight room. He's put on about 25, 30 pounds since his freshman year. And uh, that's allowed him to be a formidable force there for a full match and for a full weekend um, before he was un unable to do that because he would get a little bit winded. And I think now he's, he's put on some good bulk and he's got about 10 more pounds to go, I think. Um, and I'm just, uh, I'm really happy with where he is and with where he's playing right now. All right, coach, and final question, we'll end on this. You guys kick off, you know, championship week. A lot more postseason matches going on with all four other conferences. Are you going to be able to enjoy any of those, or is your coach at Hacko be on and doing full scout mode as you're watching the Big West, MPSF, EIVA, and MIVA postseason matches this week? You know, I, I will probably watch them on volume metrics, to be honest, and I will probably enjoy uh, the other side of the pillow and try and get a little bit of rest um, and then try and work in, you know, a really good day of practice. And then we'll figure out the opponents as, as they come. Um, so I, I'm really excited to do the prep for, for this tournament. And I know Coach Derek is, and I know the guys are too. Um, we always prep for the second round first. So I'm excited to kind of do a little bit of looking at the bracket, prep for the second round first, and then prep for the first round right before we play. 